Hi everyone. So today we will look at uh, uh, design verification. Is it a right choice to do a course? Um, let's look at few things to understand that further. Uh, before we jump into it, let's briefly understand what is verification. Uh, so functional verification is essentially a process uh, which will ensure that your design will perform uh, operations correctly uh, under all conditions adhering to the specifications. Uh, uh, the requirement specifications to which it has been designed and if you look at 70% of your uh, chip uh, design cycle is verification and uh, more than 70% of respins are due to functional bugs. So that tells you how important uh, the design verification process is and overall if you look at it this also shows us that the functional verification is one of the most uh, time consuming uh, activity and uh, uh, it's also on a critical path because it takes so long time and it comes after the design is completed uh, it comes into your uh, critical path that uh, your design is sitting uh, in house uh, because verification is not completed and unless you ship the silicon uh, you don't make money. So why companies pay uh, verification engineers? Uh, there are two reasons. One, uh, we, the, there has to be quality uh, to the uh, design that they are shipping. Without the quality, uh, retaining customers is hard. And uh, any respins, uh, that is any issues or the bugs that are left out in the design, um, after the silicon is uh, gets created, uh, it costs a lot of money to re uh, refab the chip, refab the silicon. And uh, not only money, uh, there's a lot of time that's involved in fabbing, testing, and productizing a particular chip and the total amount of effort. So respins uh, really cost a lot of fortune of money. And uh, uh, you know, the, may the bigger companies to some extent they can take it, but uh, for a very small company, especially the early stage companies, if there is a showstopper bug that's discovered post silicon, uh, they, they almost uh, wind up their operation. So is that expensive? Um, here, I before we jump into further details, I just wanted to show you the job description from different companies. I've consolidated a list over here. And the idea is that uh, we should be able to see uh, what is industry looking for and, uh, and then look at when we start learning uh, in the course as a part of the course are we really covering those aspects right so i wanted you guys to look at it so i have highlighted few things so one is uh, that the verification is performed at a different level of uh, abstractions there's a ip level verification where a particular design is verified independently like let's say there's a pcie controller uh, it's verified independently and then at a cluster level wherein uh, let's say a group of IPs are put together uh, it could be a memory subsystem, IO subsystem or a CPU subsystem uh, you know few set of IPs are put together and uh, you perform a cluster uh, the same controller gets verified in at that abstraction level and third you put it with all the things that you are really going to ship uh, where it becomes a system on chip so uh, verification is performed at all three levels and the objectives and goals of verification at different levels uh, varies and uh, not only the functionality the performance is becoming equally critical so there, there will be performance verification and uh, the verification is done through two modes these days one is the dynamic simulation based verification which is what we are going to predominantly focus on and a new area a new area or basically the tools are matured so formal verification is also emerging um, so these are the two methods that uh, we use uh, for verifying the designs today and uh, the expectation is that uh, one should be able to do the verification architecture, uh, develop the plans and build verification environment. So we will do some of these activities as a part of our course, then build agents and checkers from scratch. Um, this, once we start looking into the UVM, you will be able to see these and then as I talked about, there's an assertion based formal verification. Although we may not be doing the, we are not doing the formal verification as a part of this course, but uh, we will definitely be spending a good bit of time on assertions and assertions is one of the key aspects that you need to know uh, if you want to do formal verification. Assertions are used both in uh, dynamic 
simulation based verification as well as formal verification so we will be spending some time on the assertions and then uh, verification progress has to be tracked through metrics so there is a functional coverage there is a code coverage uh, which uh, verification and engineers are expected to be uh, well conversant with and uh, in terms of language usage we have system verilog c c++ and uh, uvm uh, based methodology is what is currently used in the industry and uh, the form verification engineers a very good uh, debugging as well as problem solving skills are extremely important and then scripting knowledge is expected either python perl or shell the python is gaining uh, more relevance uh, these days compared to Perl, uh, which was very popular earlier days. And then uh, there is a gate level simulation that's a very important uh, part of the overall verification cycle. So we'll talk about it. Along with that, uh, candidates are expected to have a good exposure on protocols like PCIe, USB, Ethernet, AMBA, uh, you know, memory subsystems, CPUs, ARM CPUs, and uh, safety, security. So various of these domains, uh, uh, people are expected to have a good grip on it. And then also some exposure to emulation and FPGA prototyping efforts. Although point to note over here is these are all these are not all of these expectations are from the trained verification engineers. But the more and more that you can cover among these areas, it uh, improves the chances of uh, getting a, a good opportunity, uh, right? So, 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 so the idea of this slide is that we should be able to touch base on uh, multiple of these topics as part of this course, and hence improve the chances of getting a good opportunity, uh, right? So now next, let's look at uh, how. Uh, you know some of the trends that are happening and convince ourselves that uh, the time that we are spending as a part of this course is really worth it. Um, so the, the mentor conducts every few years a study on uh, verification. They conduct these polls and they summarize it. Uh, so this is a chart that is showing uh, for example on the x-axis it is showing uh, different types of uh, root causes that have led to functional flaws in the design and to what percentage they have contributed and they're showing it for three uh, years so if you see the design errors are like almost contributing more than 70% uh, is a root cause that's contributed by design errors and this is the area that the functional verification uh, focuses on and uh, you can see that it is the complexity is growing and hence the number of design errors that uh, are contributing to the root cause is increasing uh, the changes in specifications uh, also leads to errors then incorrect and incomplete specification also contributes to the flaws uh, then the reused ips that we think are all okay uh, there can be some issues with them and then reused external ips that are being bought that that those also could have some issues what this means is that although we think we are reusing we can't just blindly reuse it because certain configuration that we are using for a particular project could be different and those aspects uh, might have to be re-verified. So th this shows that uh, how much important the verification process is to prevent uh, some of these uh, from happening and how important it is for verification engineers to understand and question the specification uh, thoroughly to prevent these type of loss. So this is another chart. So here uh, here they are summarizing the type of flaws that uh, contribute to respin and uh, again it's for the three years so this is number of uh, percentage of respin contribution so logic or functional uh, errors are contributing to like almost the 50 percent so you know, it's a still a very big number so uh, you know the respin is initiated due to a functional bug right and then the clocking is one very important area uh, where like you have multi multiple clocks are being used and a lot of power saving that is employed around the clocking so clocking also contributes and then uh, the analog circuitry uh, uh, especially for the high speed serial IOs the right tuning is very important and uh, depending on the type of technology that we use uh, this varies uh, so although this one doesn't really come directly under the purview of uh, functional verification there's a crosstalk it doesn't directly come Power consumption, uh, to some extent it comes, we do the low power verification, so there uh, we need to make sure the low power schemes that are being employed are, are working correctly, That's, that becomes important. And um, we have mixed signal interfaces, there's some level of uh, uh, mixed signal simulation based function verification is also performed, so it also partly comes over here. and. Um, 
then you have yield issues which 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 are not uh, directly related uh, then you have timing uh, related issues uh, that that also are not very directly but whereas when we perform some level of gate level simulation uh, it does uh, come a little bit into the picture and these days most of the complex ips are made up of a combination of software and hardware so there's a part of firmware that comes into play that uh, firmware verification uh, also needs to be uh, performed ir drops not a directly the part then there is a safety and security features that are coming in uh, recently uh, you know those are adding as a new dimension to the overall process of functional verification so those also uh, contribute to the respins so overall uh, you know the design errors uh, the clocking part and the firmware and the safety and security and the power right so these these are important areas that uh, we need to uh, focus on so if we look at the language adoption trends right so of course we all know vhdl and verilog are very popular uh, verilog uh, enjoys higher adoption compared to vhdl and uh, so if you see the system verilog adoption is growing uh, and uh, so we are going to be focusing on on, on the system very log there's another language called specman e uh, which which started off this uh, constraint random verification uh, this is still still being used um, and then c c++ is also used uh, there's new one that's coming in as a portable uh, stimulus and also the python uh, is also growing uh, in terms of adoption and uh, in terms of the methodologies uh, where uh, in, in the in the form of base class libraries that are being used uh, if you look at it uh, so you can see that the uvm uh, enjoys a very big uh, share and um, of course the ovm uh, vmm are kind of folded into the uh, uvm uh, so 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 i think like uh, so 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 it shows that i think like if you if you looked at the curves the system verilog and uvm uh, is very clear that they, they they have the highest usage of course that doesn't mean only they are being used there is a uh, areas where the other uh, you know verification methodologies are also being used but predominantly these have the highest usage and uh, if we look at this is the chart showing um the design engineer versus verification engineers uh, uh, for every year how how they are being uh, how, the, how many numbers that are being utilized so uh, i think like uh, the the number of verification engineers required is slightly uh, more than the design engineers whereas if you look at about 15 20 years ago uh, there were fewer verification engineers but now the need for verification engineers has become high because of the uh, growth in the overall complexity of the chips so i think thank you so i hope this session gave you an idea as to why uh, verification is important and uh, what is the expectation from the industry and uh, and i hope that gives you uh, the importance um, like i hope that that convinces you that what we are going to study next is important and relevant uh, so uh, we will see you in the uh, next session thank you